Hi, do you have a large app and Xcode previews are too slow that they become unusable? Or do you share code between your iOS and watchOS apps, including those files in both targets? In this video, I will share how in my day job app, we use SPMM packages to divide our code and how that increased our speed of iterations and allow us to reuse the code in multiple targets. What I share is based on a large app I work on for my day job in the biggest fitness chain in the Nordic countries, with 550,000 users per month. My name is Felipe and I am an iOS and macOS developer with 7 years of experience based in Norway. I post Apple development content on Blue Sky and on this channel. Subscribe not to miss anything. To illustrate how to split an iOS app with SPM packages, I will extend the movie catalog app that I've been using in my latest videos. The app is inspired by the Apple TV app, but focus on movies with the data from the moviedb.org. Why divide? One of the main reasons we decided to split our code into SPM packages was to reuse parts of our app in different targets. Infrastructure, like the authentication, token handling, and the working needs to be reused in multiple targets, like our widgets and our watch app. Otherwise, we would end up with brittle duplication. The same with our design system colors. In our watchOS app, we need these contents initially defined in the iOS app. It can also be the case that we have certain functionality in our app that can be open source, so other apps could benefit from it. The second reason to divide our code into SPM packages was faster build times. When working on changes to our design system, we don't need to compile the whole iOS app, for example. When updating features present in our large iOS app, Xcode previews take too long to update so they become unusable to iterate faster on UI. On the other hand, when new features are being developed on independent packages, we avoid those slow preview updates. How do we divide? In the app for my day job, we use local SPM packages that live in the same repo as our iOS codebase, and that's our default approach. If we were to use global packages, it would be easier to share the code with other apps, but then doing changes on them would require a new release of the package and then the integration work with the target app. For that reason, local packages are the best option for us in here, as we get the best of both worlds, focus compilation and speed of iteration and integration. Our local packages are company specific, not something we want to open source, but if there was generic functionality that we could indeed share as an open source, that would still be an option, without requiring too much work. With that said, the next important thing to notice is that we divide our packages in three folders, base, infrastructure and features. This is to indicate which type of packages we have depending on the containing folder. Packages in the base directory are meant to have minimal dependencies, if any. They are simple packages. Example of this kind of packages could be a collection of callable models for the app, constants taken from the design system, like colors and spacing, and etc. The next level is infrastructure. In here, we can have packages that depend on base packages, like the design system components, networking, and navigation. In the case of networking, for example, we need access to the models, but other packages depending on models don't need the full networking implementation. Finally, the last level is feature packages. In here, we can have full features of our app contained in a single package. This means that not every type needs to be public, just the elements that the client apps require. It can be these kind of packages require global information, like singletons that need to be injected. An example of that data is when our packages need information about the current user. With these levels defined, the targets iOS, widgets, and watchOS use these packages to deliver the features they are intended to. It's important to know that these package levels determine which packages can depend on which ones. Base packages cannot depend on packages from infrastructure nor features. Infrastructure packages can depend on base ones, but not on features. Also, we need to avoid circular dependencies between packages. Example. I will split into SPM packages the code from my movie app in a similar way that the app from my day job uses. This separation might not be needed for such a small app, but I do it for illustration purposes. For simplicity, I won't use Swift 6 in the packages. Migrating to Swift 6 can be the topic for another video. The plan. Initially, my sample iOS app looks like this. All its code is present in the same target. The code itself is well organized in folders, and those folders will give us a bit of a hint of how to split that code into SPM packages. I will start the work by creating the container folders for my packages. Base infrastructure and features. Since I already have a package in here that doesn't have dependencies, it can be moved to the base folder, and the app should still compile without issues. From the folder structure and the code in my app, I like to make a bit of a plan of which packages I want to split and how. Since I'm duplicating the package variation we have on my day job app, it's easy to start with a plan up front, but normally I would split packages from the most obvious and then take other packages as I see the need for it. 
For the base packages, I want movie models that will host the callable structs, config that will hold some constants that I use all around, a package with development sample data, in addition to the snapshot testing utilities. For the infrastructure level, I will have three packages, movie components, movie DB networking, and navigation. The movie components package will be the design system of some sort, and it will depend on movie models to know which data I'm creating components for. The networking package will implement how to get the data from the moviedb.org. And finally, the navigation package will contain the declaration of destinations and routing, so feature packages can navigate between screens in the app without necessarily knowing the details of those destination screens. Finally, just for illustration purposes, I will extract a screen of the app into a feature package to show how these kind of packages are structured. Extract base models. With that plan, let's start by extracting the simplest of packages, movie models, to show how the typical steps involved into extracting code from the app target to a package. We start by creating a package called movie models that I will add to my Xcode project and set in the right group location. Then I will clean up the package.swift file and specify that this package will be for iOS 17 and app. I can then just simply move the models from my app to the SPM package. Since my models depend on the tag package, I declare this dependency on the package.swift file. I like using this package so my models have type safe IDs. Check out the readme for tag to learn more about it. Once that code is in place, I make sure that the package itself can build by selecting the right scheme on Xcode and build. In this case, everything works. Now I need to actually import the package into the iOS app and I do that in the Xcode project settings file. I attempt to build the app and I get tons of errors. They are mostly about the types not being available in the project anymore. To fix that, we need to start making the models and their properties public so they can be used outside the package itself. Since the content of this package is simple, I don't really hesitate to make everything public. Once that's done, the next step is to actually import the movie models package where the models are used. In this case, there are many places that need this import. With that done, the iOS app builds correctly and I have successfully extracted a package from my code. Networking package. Out of camera, I created the other base packages I would use. Config and preview data. Now to start with an infrastructure package for networking, we will follow the same steps. We create the package, add the package.swift file and move the code. One interesting part of this package is that we depend on other local packages in the same repo. Then we can specify those dependencies in the package.swift using the package path call with the relative location of your package. Once that's done, we select the right scheme and make sure the package builds. Then it's just a matter of adding the package to the app. Mark use properties and methods as public and add important statements to the package. Navigation. One interesting package to check is the navigation package. This one falls into the infrastructure category. And the reason to extract it is for feature packages to be able to navigate between screens in the app. Then the navigation package has as the public API to make that navigation possible between feature packages. I made a whole video explaining how the navigation is structured in this app, which you can check in the description down below. One of the important aspects is that for navigation to happen, we need both to define possible destinations and map those destinations to actual screens in our app. This package focuses on the first part. The second part needs to live inside the app target itself, as the app has the full context of modules and can do that mapping between destinations and views. Then I create the navigation package that will hold the router and all the destinations with the same steps as before. All files are copied from the original navigation folder except the destination view mapping and navigation container. If I try to compile the navigation package itself, I will get some errors though. Currently, the associated value for the movie gallery value destination is a type that is not available in the package. The image container view data is tied to the UI, so it's not really a type I want to move to a dependency of navigation or navigation itself. Since the view type type depends on the model movie details image collection dot backdrop, I opt for the route to depend on that model instead, which is indeed available to the navigation package. This is an interesting aspect of extracting code into packages. We need to rethink and adapt our initial code to solve these dependencies in the right way, effectively reducing coupling of our code. With that out of the way, the rest goes easily enough to make the package peel, import its tests, add the dependency to the app, and restore the functionality. Feature package. As an example for a feature package, I extracted the movie details screen from my project. The intention is that for a bigger app, certain related screens can live in a package together. Now I already extracted the package and I didn't need to do many changes to the code itself. It was mostly about the data source logic. 
In this case, the package needs to navigate to other screens. For that, I use the navigation package. Here we can see how the detail screen can navigate to the actor details just by using the clear destination, and the iOS app will actually create and present the appropriate view when this button is pressed. This was the main reason I extracted the navigation destinations and router into a package, so feature packages can navigate from to each other. You can check the sample code in the description down below. I also include how I move the snapshot test for this screen to this particular package and how I use some helpers that allow me to successfully run this test in the Xcode Cloud. With that in place, new features can be developed in new packages, so we can work focus on them. Each package we have can have its own localization, assets, tests and documentation, so they can be quite self-contained. Also when creating packages, we decide which files the package exposes. Everything else is internal, so we have less risk of name collisions across the modules of the app. Conclusion: It takes some work to split an app into SPM packages, but the effort will definitely pay off. You will be able to reuse your code in different targets and iterate faster. You will also have clearer boundaries between the modules of your app as extracting the code into a package forces you to think on dependencies and reduce coupling by doing so. Let me know if you have any questions on these topics in the comments down below. Also, don't forget to like and subscribe. If you enjoyed this video, you might want to check my video about advanced navigation for Swift UI apps next. Until the next one.